Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to go over a calorimetry type problem. So let's get into this. So we have a quantity of ice at zero degrees Celsius is added to 50.0 grams of water in a glass at 55 degrees Celsius. After the ice melted, the temperature of the water in the glass was 15 degrees Celsius. How much ice was added? Okay. So how do you deal with these sort of problems? Now, I'm a true, I'm a, I'm a big believer in teaching someone how to fish rather than giving someone a fish. If you know the old adage, if you uh, give someone a fish, you feed them for a day. If you teach them how to fish, feed them for a lifetime. Same thing with uh, these sorts of problems and solving problems. There is a way to go about it, a strategy that you can do to go about answering pretty much any of these problems. So I can show you how to answer this problem, but I want to go over the strategy that I use to help me answer any of these type of problems. So let's get into this. So the first thing you want to do is identify the things involved that are giving off heat and those things that are absorbing heat. So those that are transferring heat from and to what's doing the absorbing, what's doing the releasing, right? and make sure you identify all of those um, Q values, right? Because Q um, is equal to M cat. We can use that. We could other use other uh, formulas, but the first thing we need to do is identify where things are absorbing heat, where things are giving off heat, right? So here we have a glass, 50 grams of water, and it's at a higher temperature. So right away, you should know that one of the rules or laws of thermodynamics is that heat is always transferred from the hotter object to the colder object. So here we have a glass of water of 50 grams of water that is at a higher temperature, meaning that it's hotter. So uh, the energy is going to be transferred from the 50 grams of water. So let's write that down. We're going to have a Q1. And we're going to say that's equal to Q of the water. Okay. Now, what is absorbing the water? Well, obviously the ice is going to be absorbing the heat. What's going to be absorbing the heat from the, the water, the 50 grams of water at a higher temperature? Well, the ice is going to because it's going to melt, right? So when it melts, it's going to turn into water. So you've got a certain mass of the ice that is going to now turn into water. So we got, that would be maybe Q2. So we got Q of the ice. Okay. So we've got Q of the water, Q of the ice. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is we end up with a glass of water that has 15 degrees Celsius. Now, if the ice had melted and the water stayed at zero degrees, then that would be the end of the story. But since we have the temperature at 15 degrees, then we have to pay attention to the fact that the water in the glass at 15 degrees is a mixture of the water that was originally in the glass, 50 grams, plus the liquid water that came from the ice. That ice got melted. It was at zero degrees Celsius. It melted at zero degrees Celsius. So as the water, as the ice is melting, the water from the ice is staying at, at, at zero degrees Celsius, assuming, let's kind of theoretically separate the water that was originally in the glass from the water that's produced from the ice. So theoretically or hypothetically, uh, in our mind's eye, we can kind of keep those separate, even though they're kind of in reality mixed together. It's a lot easier to understand the problem if we kind of just keep those mentally separate. So 
as the ice is melting, the water that's being formed is staying at, 50, at zero degrees. Once all of the ice is melted, all of that heat that went into melting the ice is done. Now we have the water that's left over from the ice, right? Well, that water at zero degrees now has to be increased in temperature to 15 degrees. So whatever that mass of water is, it goes from zero to 15 degrees. So we have to keep that water separate from the beginning water. So we got to make distinctions between the water that came from the ice and the water that was originally in the glass. So keep those mentally separate. It's going to make the problem a lot easier to deal with. So there we have a, a third Q value. And we'll call this Q, how should we say? Um, we'll say water, water slash or water comma I, water from the ice. This will be the original water. And we'll call this, instead of Q of the ice, we'll call this the Q of fusion, right? So the Q fusion, fusion is melting. So this is the heat that is due to the melting, uh, causes the melting of the ice, okay? So that captures everything that is going on, okay? So now that we have our Q values, notice that we have more than two Q values. Normally, if you only had two Q values, you could just say, oh, Q1 is equal to negative Q2, plug in your equation and solve. You can do that with this one, right? You would have to keep track of what's doing the absorbing, right? So we said that the water at the higher temperature, right, that was originally in the glass, that's going to give away heat to the colder substances that are absorbing the heat, right? So you could set it up. In this case, it would be Q1 equal to, or negative Q1 is equal to Q2 plus Q3 and do it that way. Um, but rather than try to figure all that out, um, set it all equal to zero. What we know and what we're assuming is that all of the heat is being transferred from one substance to the other substances. No heat is lost to the environment. This is an assumption we're making. But under that assumption, the magnitude of the heat given away by the water, the 50 grams of water, is being completely absorbed by the ice and the water that is formed after the ice melts. All of that is being absorbed by the water originally in the glass. So therefore, um, since they are equal in magnitude, but opposite in sign, if you add it all together, it should add up to zero. So why not just start with that? And that's the way I like to do it because it makes more sense. I, I should say it makes more sense, but it, I think it makes it easier to deal with. So zero plus Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. And we don't have to worry about the negatives because remember one side was negative and we just brought it over to the other side and it became positive. But you don't have to worry because as long as you put in the numbers correctly and make sure that you put in the change in temperature correctly and the amount of heat, the sign of the amount of heat, is it absorbed or is it released? If it's released, then that should be negative. If it's absorbed, it should be positive. If you have a delta, if you change in temperature, remember it's going to be final minus the initial. You must get that correct. Otherwise your sign is going to be wrong. So as long as you put in everything correctly, it should work out. Okay. So then now we're going to substitute these three for what we have here. So we'll say zero is equal to Q of the water. This is the water originally in the glass, the 50 grams, plus 
Q2, which is the melting of the ice. That's the Q of fusion. This is the heat absorbed by the ice that got it to melt. And then this is the Q of the water that was formed from the ice and the heat, the amount of height this water absorbed to get up to 15 degrees. So this is, we're going to call Q W comma I water from the ice. Okay. Now we have our equation. So now what we need to do is figure out what the formulas are for each of these and substitute the formulas. So here, Q of the water, we have 50 grams of water. Well, that's just going to be our Q equals MCAT equation. We have the mass of the water, we have the specific heat of the water, and we have the temperature change of the water. So that's going to be equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat of water times the temperature change of the water. And remember, temperature change is equal to final minus the initial. Okay. What about Q fusion, the, the heat of fusion from the ice? Well, that's going to be the heat of fusion of ice is given in terms of uh, joules per mole or uh, joules per mass or kilojoules per mole, something like that. So that's going to be, uh, typically it's going to be uh, joules per mole or kilojoules per mole. So here, I'll, re I'll rewrite down here. So Q of fusion is going to be equal to the heat of fusion of ice, right? And this is typically going to be kilojoules per mole. So we're going to need to multiply this by N, which is the number of moles of the ice that is, that is being uh, melted, right? However, we're asked to look for the mass of the ice, right? So um, you can find the moles first, but uh, we're going to have to substitute this. It'd be easier to substitute this. So how do you get mole? Well, what is moles equal to? Well, moles, or let's, let's start with molar mass, right? So if molar mass, right, I'll do uh, my, no, that's not right. I'll just do mm for molar mass. So the molar mass is equal to what? How do you calculate the molar mass? Well, it's the grams of the substance per mole, which grams is mass, right? So it's going to be mass in grams over moles. And moles is N. So it's going to be mass over N. So if I rearrange this, I can get the number of moles in terms of molar mass and mass. So if I multiply both sides by N, right? So let's make, make this clear just in case I'm, I might be losing some people. So here I have molar mass is equal to the mass over the number of moles mass in grams. If I multiply both sides by N, I get N times the molar mass is equal to the mass, but I want moles by itself. So now I'm going to divide by the molar mass and I end up getting the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. So now that I have this, I can substitute mass over molar mass for N. So then this becomes the heat of fusion of ice multiplied by the mass of the ice 
divided by the molar mass of the ice. The molar mass of the ice is just the molar mass of water. I, I can look that up. I can calculate the molar mass of water. And so now I have the mass of the water, which is the same as the mass of the ice that I put into the cup. So just because the ice melts doesn't mean that the mass changes, right? So it's the same mass, whether it's in liquid form or ice form, the mass is the same. So then this is going to be the formula that I'm going to use to associate with or substitute in for Q of fusion. Okay, and then the Q of the water that formed from the ice, well, that's in the water phase. So I'm going to use Q equals M cat again for this one. Um, so in this case, again, it's going to be Q. In this case, I'm going to say W I for water from the ice is equal to the mass of the water from the ice multiplied by the specific heat of water because that's what it is multiplied by the change in temperature of the water from the ice. So now I have the formulas for each of my Q values. So I can substitute all of that in for this here. So let me go ahead and erase this so I don't need this anymore. And so let me go ahead and Put this in so qw that's this one here so that's going to be mass of the water multiplied by specific heat of the water times delta t of the water so that's going to be temperature final minus temperature initial of the water this is the original water i had in the glass the 50 grams plus the heat of fusion. So that's this formula here. I'm going to substitute that in. So it's going to be the delta H of fusion of the ice multiplied by the mass of the ice over the molar mass of water plus, and again, this is going to be this equation here and uh, since here this is the water that came from the ice but the mass is the same so it's still the mass of the ice so I'm just gonna write mi to make to be consistent here because that's what I'm solving for so it's gonna be the mass of the ice multiplied by the specific heat of water because this in this case it's liquid water melted multiplied by the change in temperature, which is again, final minus initial. But again, this is the change in temperature of the water that came from the ice. Here, let me redo this so I can get it all in. Specific heat of water times temperature uh, final minus temperature initial. Okay, so now I have everything that I need. Now all I need to do is plug everything in and solve. So um, zero is equal to the mass of the water. That was, the, this is the original water, 50 grams. So this is gonna be 50.0 grams multiplied by the specific heat, which is going here, let me, let me move this over because I'm afraid I'm going to run out of room. So zero is equal to 50.0 grams of the water originally in the class multiplied by the specific heat of water, which is 4.186 joules per gram degrees Celsius multiplied by the temperature change, final minus initial. What's the final temperature? 15 degrees, 15 degrees Celsius, final minus initial. Um, the initial temperature uh, of the water in the glass was 55 
Degree Celsius, let me double check that to be sure. Yep. So 55 degrees Celsius. So that's the first part. Now this part here, I can look up the heat of fusion for ice. If you don't already know it, you can look it up. And the heat of fusion for ice is six point zero one. So this is going to be six point zero one kilojoules per mole. multiplied by, and again, it's going to be the mass of the ice over the molar mass of water, which is going to be 18.016 grams per mole. Okay, so this is going to be grams per mole. So this is the molar mass. And so now we have this part here. And so now we have to do the third part plus, and again, so it's going to be the mass of the ice, which is now melted, multiplied by the specific heat of water. So that's going to be the same as over here, 4.186. So 4.186 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Multiply here, I'll bring this down. I'm running out of room here. Plus uh, the mass of the ice multiplied, oops. Sorry about that. Multiplied by the specific heat of water, which is going to be 4.186 joules per gram degrees Celsius, multiplied by the temperature change of the water that melted from the ice. Now remember, the ice started at zero degrees Celsius here. When it, the, when it melts in the water, at the very instant that it's all water, it's still at zero degrees because the melting process stays at zero degrees. So once all the ice is melted, again, we're mentally separating the two waters. Then that amount of water needs to then increase in temperature from zero to 15 degrees. So that amount of water is absorbing energy from the original water at a higher temperature in order to increase its temperature up to 15 degrees at equilibrium when, when it reaches equilibrium. So that's the way you got to kind of think about it. So here, the final temperature is again is going to be 15 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature, which is zero degrees Celsius. And so now we have everything plugged in. So now it's just simplifying, multiplying, and all of that. So here, we're going to get, here we got grams are going to cancel out here. And we have degrees Celsius are going to cancel out here. We're left with joules. So here we're going to get zero is equal to, and we multiply this. So notice that. When you subtract this, this is going to be a negative uh, change in temperature. So this value is going to end up giving us a negative amount of joules. And so when we calculate that, we get negative 83.72. So this is going to give us a negative 8,372 joules of energy. So that's the amount of energy that was lost 
or released or given to the ice and the water that formed from the ice. So it's negative, right? Now, if we do this here, right? So what's going to happen here is we're going to have moles. So here we got moles here. And so moles on the bottom here is going to be uh, cancel out moles here. So that's going to cancel out. And we're going to end up with grams, kilojoules over grams. So when we multiply, when we take 6.01 divided by 18.06, we're going to get 0.3339 so plus 0 0.3339 kilojoules per gram okay um, now I have kilojoules here, I have joules here. I'm gonna want these to be the same. So what I can do here, I'll just show the work up here. 0 0.3339 kilojoules per gram. So I wanna convert this. So if I do the conversion factor, one kilojoule is equal to a thousand joules. So since I have kilojoules here on top, I'm going to put one kilojoule on the bottom, a thousand joules on top, kilojoules cancel out. And so I end up multiplying a thousand by this and it ends up being 333.9 joules per gram. So instead of having this, I can just change this to joules and then this is going to be 333.9 joules per gram multiplied by the mass of the ice, m sub i, the mass of the ice that melted. And finally, I can do this part here. So 15 minus 0 is 15 multiplied by 4.186. And again, here, the degrees Celsius are going to cancel out. So I have joules over gram. So then when I multiply these together, I get 62.79 so this is going to be 62.79 um, joules over gram. Again, multiplied by, oops, multiplied by the mass of the ice. So I wanted to separate, separate this. So this is my new equation here. So I have negative 83.72 joules plus 33.9 joule over gram mi multiplied by the mass of the ice plus 62.79 joules over grams multiplied the mass of the ice. So now, now that I simplified everything, I can add like terms together. So I'm going to add these two together since they're both got joules over grams and they're multiplied by m the mass of the ice, I can add these two together. So that's going to give me zero equal to negative 83.72 joules plus, and what do I get when I add those together? That's going to be 396.68, joules per gram multiplied by the mass of the ice. Now, since I want the mass of the ice by itself, I need to get the joules over here. So I'm going to add 
8,372 joules to both sides. 8,372 joules. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase up here to give myself some room since I don't need this anymore. So now what I have up here, I'm going to just write it up here. So I have a positive 8,372 joules is equal to this here. That's going to be equal to 396.68. And that's joules per gram times the mass of the ice. Let me just double check to make sure I didn't make a mistake there. 396.68. Yeah. So now notice all I need to do, I need to get M, the mass of the ice by itself. I just divide. So 396.68 joules per gram. Divide this by 396.68 joules per gram. Now notice when I'm dividing these units, joules are going to cancel out, leaving me with gram unit, which is what I want because I'm solving for mass of ice, and it's in grams. So now all I need to do is divide this, and I get the mass of the ice is equal to 21.1 grams. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do these sorts of problems. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, if you like this video, if this helped you out in any way, then please like the video, share the video, hit the like button somewhere over here. Also, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. When you do, click all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. If you have a question or problem you need help with, or if you have a topic, write that down below. I would love to do that for you. Thanks for joining me, and have a great day.